Now in order to make um, this project a little faster, instead of doing as much detail on this side as I do on this side, I'm just going to paint a nice, just cover it like I did on the front. Just pick out a few colors and um, cover it like that. I'm just going to use the same colors again. And here we go. And now when I'm doing this, I'm going to make sure that I don't swipe in from the outside or I'm going to get a yellow border underneath on the part that I already did. So I'm just going to make sure anything that I do close to the border is going off the border and not in toward the center or it's parallel with the border. Okay, so what I want to do now is just take a large stencil, cover that up, and stencil over that with two or three colors that are still in the same color scheme. So let's get some colors out here. Um, I pretty much got it. Okay, I'm going to lift this up. Now, I would say your best bet is to kind of tape this down, just barely touching the edges, and then tape this down too, so you could see that my hands would shift sometimes. But now look how much more interesting this is, because the background has three or four colors, and the top has three colors, and so it's constantly changing. Um, I'm going to let this dry. Okay. And then my next coat will be to go ahead and seal this. And you can see um, I have only a tiny, tiny bit of yellow that may have gotten onto the front from sliding this around when I was doing that. And that's it. The rest of it's not damaged. One thing you could do as well is do this first. And that way, once you do this, you know that you won't get any uh, smearing from doing the other side. Okay, I'm going to rinse my stencil off and prep this to um, varnish the other side. Hello, I was looking at this and all of a sudden it occurred to me what I'm missing is that the last uh, one of these I made, I had a white spiral in the middle of this flower right here. So let me catch up on that. There we go. Now that's just a, a small touch, but it really makes the whole thing come alive. So, okay, I'm going to let that dry again, maybe even blow dry it, and then uh, just give it a quick spray of that matte fixative, and then we're going to seal this. Okay, so this is, everything's dry, both sides, and I'm ready for this. This is Deco Art Americana DuraClear. Now, whether you use matte or satin or glossy is up to you. This one is the satin, and you can see what kind of a shine this one has. Um, that was a friend had shared with her with me her supply of that. So now I'm going to try the satin and, or the matte, excuse me, and see what I think of that. So I'm going to get a nice wide brush, and I could put this in a little tub, or I'm just going to drip it on here. and I'm spreading it toward the end instead of bringing it this way and leaving a big ridge right here. So 
I will do the first coat, let it dry, and do the other coats in succession. In between, make sure you're rinsing this off with uh, water and mild soap if you need to. And I don't worry about uh, cleaning this until I'm all the way done, but one thing I have found helpful is to just lay four of these out that are the same height and drape it on there to dry so the ends aren't sticking to my mat here. And then another thing you can do is to lightly just tap it across here if you want to get the very ends of this sealed so that, you know, if you do get water or whatever on the edges of the paper, it will be sealed as well. And I'm like I said, I'm just going over it lightly. And then I'm going to make sure I don't have these ridges across the edge here. So This has three coats on it now. And I want to show you a comparison between the first one, which was satin, and this one, which is matte. There is no shine whatsoever to this one. Um, so because of that, it also has a completely different feel as well. But it is sealed. Now I'm going to turn it over and do this side. And it really does dry to the touch pretty quickly. So I was very, ple very pleased with how this responds. want to put your fingers on here to hold it in place so usually I just put my fingernails over here on the left side and stops it from sliding over to the left as I'm doing this. Okay so I have three coats of that on each side and now I want to put the holes in to get my elastic in. So I'd like to get a piece of paper, and especially because I know I'm going to be making more of these, I like to get a piece of paper the size of this and just do my holes in here and use this as a template. Um, but of course, this is eight and a half by 11 and a half, and most uh, standard American papers are eight and a half by 11. So uh, if you have maybe a 12 inch piece of paper, you can cut it down to size or you can just center this left, right as well as you can. And so then what I did was I folded it down the center or scored it in the center so I'd know exactly where center is. And then, um, let me get you right in here so you can see. I drew a line and this is one quarter of the way in, well, excuse me, one quarter of an inch, one quarter of an inch from the side. I drew a line on both sides here and here. And then I came around and I drew a lot, drew uh, two little marks here. I set my ruler like at the one inch mark on the fold and I drew just shy of half an inch. So, well, basically on this one, let me explain that again. <laughs> basically what I did was I marked basically half an inch out on, on either side of this, okay? And that's where I'm going to punch my hole, but not on the center. So if your line is, let me draw it right here. If your line is like this and you draw these, if you can see that, I actually punched just inside of those lines like that. That's where I got that. Those are just inside the half inch. And then I measured halfway across, left and right, to get this here. And as you can see, the first time I punched it, I was too far off to the left, so I punched it here too. Now I can just draw a line right in the middle. So all I'm going to do is take this, center it again, and if you're not sure if you're centered, you can measure this and this to make sure you've got it straight. So I'm going to mark these so that I know where to punch my holes. And I'm doing right in the center this time. The thing I have a hard time with is sometimes when I'm looking at this, because you can't look straight down to see whether you're punching your hole in the right place, um, and so therefore it's, it seems like it's, I get it in the wrong, wrong area. And that's what I've noticed. So I get a little bit to the left or right. So this is the Crocodile Big Bunch, Big Bunch. I did it again, Crocodile Big Bite, and I am just punching my holes in here. I'm using the one eighth inch mar, um, punch. I've got some glare here. It's hard to see. Now I'm going to put this up toward um, setting the uh, eyelet. So now I do have my tiny eyelets here. 
and I'm going, I think I'm just going to use white this time. Okay. Now, I guess the question is, do you really have to have eyelets in there? Maybe not. Um, this is pretty strong. I don't know how well it would hold up to the elastic pulling on it. I like the look of the eyelets and how finished that looks. The next thing you're going to need, and I wrote that on my paper here, was a 12-inch um, uh, strand of elastic and a 33-inch strand of elastic. Now, I had a hard time finding elastic that was strong enough and the ones I was finding at the craft store were too thin and too frail and stretched out too soon. So I ended up going to um, eBay and searching two millimeter elastic and that's where I got that from. So I want to turn this over, it doesn't matter whether I start the top or the bottom, and push that through and then out the other side. I'm basically going to go around the same thing twice here. I want to leave enough to tie that. I'm going to go down. And you'll notice that these get frayed pretty quickly. And if you want, you can put some of uh, like this on there or some kind of uh, Mod Podge or something to help seal the end so it stops fraying on you. And through here. Now here's the difficult part. We're going to do that same thing again. We're going to go back through the same we already did, but the problem is that um, once there's already an elastic in the hole, it gets really hard to, uh, to go through the same holes again. So what I have found is if I use really strong thread, not just regular sewing thread, but like button thread, and I put, if I put them in the hole the direction that I want my elastic to go, I put both ends of the loop, oops, I had it, now let go. I loop it and put both loose ends into the hole, like that. And then if I put my elastic in this loop of thread, I can pull it through like that. And now I have to do that for all of these. Now I want to go back down the same way I already went this way. There you go. Now I have to just tie these together. And um, all you have to do is just kind of, you know, move these around to where they're all about the same strength. And now you've got four elastics to be able to put your notebooks in. And all we need to do now is this one here. So if you are going to put a charm on, now is the time. If you're not going to put a charm on it, You can just stick it through now. So I want to pull the, let's see, I want the loop to go that way. Go right between these two threads, I mean two elastics. I keep calling them threads. Now don't pull it all the way through. Just pull it through this much, move your thread, and then kind of line these up here. Now one thing I like to do, I'm always afraid I'm going to, um, when I'm tying my knot, I'm going to pull this through the other way. So I just stick my scissors in there to make sure I don't, I don't do that when I'm tying my knot. And now we have our notebook. Okay, so now here's what I need to know. What do you think about using the satin or the matte? Like there is no gloss to this whatsoever. And it definitely has a different feel because of this. This is not sticky, 
but it is glossy and has a different feel. This is protected. What what do you think is prettier, the the uh, satin, I keep wanting to call it gloss, the satin or the matte? Because I think that would help as far as, you know, knowing which ones, if I keep making these for my shop, which ones to put in there. Also, uh, one thing you can do, too, I wanted to say, is um, if you want to help this curve a little better here, just kind of lay your um, uh, bone folder on there and just pull around there. Other, that way it helps it to kind of curve instead of just folding right there. See more of a curve instead of a fold. So that is it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for requesting I do the tutorial. I'm glad to be able to put that together. They are really easier to do than it looks.